In this video, we want to finish off our code that uses an animation timer. So we have previously set up a program where we have a list of enemies that currently only has one on it, and it moves towards the player, and we made it so the player can move under the control of the keyboard. Our player is a little bit faster than the enemy, so it can run away. In order to allow the player to move at on diagonals and to have accurate control for how fast the player could move we made it so that we had a number of boolean values that were set to true when the key was pressed down and false when it was released now what I'd like to add to this is the ability to add another enemy every so often so we're going to put another var out here of a spawn delay and this will be measured in seconds so I think that 5 is a perfectly fine start to that and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say spawn delay minus equals delta if spawn delay is less than zero, that means the appropriate amount of time has passed and a number of things are going to happen so I don't forget it later. I'm going to set the spawn delay back up to 5.0. If I were to forget to do that, then as soon as it got down to zero, we would just start creating a huge number of enemies. And when this happens, I'm going to add a new enemy, and I think I'm just going to add them at kind of a random location. So, enemies, actually we're going to do two things. So val e is a new circle at a random location. So math.random times 600 math dot random times 600 and I believe we set the radius to 10 for the enemies I want contents plus equals e and enemies cons equals e so we're gonna add the enemies to the contents we're also going to add it to our enemies list. Let's see if that code is happy. Nope, let's see. Too many arguments to circle. Oh, because I'm saying a new circle and for the circle we don't include the new. And this should be content and not contents. Minor typo type errors. Okay, so there we go. So in five seconds we should get another enemy appearing somewhere. There we go. And then in another five seconds, we should get another enemy appearing. And should one appear near the bottom of the screen, I would potentially be in trouble. Well, that one was pretty close. Where is the next one going to come in? Hmm. So as I was saying, the, having the player move faster whoa, than the enemies. Now, of course, what I'm not doing right now is I'm not checking for collisions. So even if I just sit here and let all of them run into me, nothing of significance happens. We can fix that, though. We're going to add inside of our timer. We're already calculating the distance to all of the enemies. And so what I want to do inside of here is to say if dist is less than the sum of the two radii. So e dot, I believe, let's go check the API. We can ask for a center x and a center y. Question is, did they put this under radius or size? Radius, excellent. If that is less than the enemy's radius, 
and its property. So we need a value plus the player's radius value. That means that the player has died and we should add something into the content. Content plus equals new label. Actually, how about we do a new text? You lose at 250, comma 300. It's good enough for me. Now, of course, just because we're doing that doesn't mean that it actually changes anything. Everyone will keep moving towards you. I need to stop the timer. This is where things get a little bit interesting. This is part of why I wanted to include this in the code. Error. Recursive value timer needs type. Okay, so why is, why is timer a recursive value? Well, because now I am referring to timer inside of timer. Just like with recursive functions, if you make a function recursive, you have to give a return type. If you make a value recursive, you can't let Scala just infer the type. We have to say it explicitly. So I need to say that the timer is an animation timer before coming into here. And I don't have my text imported. It is in the package called text. And we'll see if I have the right arguments for it as well. Nope. It type mismatch required string. So let's go look in the API at how we need to build a text. Double double string as opposed to I have string double double. Insert 250, 300, and get rid of those. And hopefully that gives us what we want. This runs to get this over with quickly to see if it actually does what it's supposed to. I'm just going to head, go headlong into that one. And there we go. We lost. Hitting the keys does not continue to play. All of the enemies stopped. That's another advantage of having the player happening in the animation timer. If we had actually moved the player out here the way that we used to, I would still be able to move the player. Now when I hit keys, all that happens is it changes those Boolean values, but because the timer isn't going, that doesn't make this change. So we have a nice little reasonably complete application. This can be, you know, it's actually a playable game to see how long you stay alive. What we'd probably want to do if we were going to be a little bit more serious about this is to actually count how many seconds the person does manage to stay alive and then, whoop, there we go. Okay, and then display that along with the you lose. <clears throat> we would say something about you managed to live for however long and that way there would be some objective to aim for. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it.